offended. But I'm okay tonight with the world knowing that I'm a Christian with all the same core fundamentals and yet with distinct them that are not your typical dried up hypocritical casual sinning saint that believes the gifts of the spirit went out with the apostles I ain't one of them I'm the kind of child of God that still believes that what the Bible said is what the Bible said wait a minute now pastor you're saying that you, are you saying that we should be filled with the spirit seek to be filled with the spirit oh yeah so these people that are out there telling you that when the perfect comes that the gifts will be done away with so in other, in other words what they were saying now I'm going to tell you how silly this sounds okay when the perfect comes all oh, there would be no need for tongues no need for gifts and signs and miracles when the perfect comes so what they try to tell you and convince you is that the perfect came in the New Testament yeah he did the problem is is that was written after the perfect had come in the New Testament what coming was he talking about when the perfect comes when Christ comes for the church in the latter day that's when the perfect comes in that that return to get his bride how do you know that well let's just apply good old common old-fashioned common sense the reason why that the gifts of the Spirit were important and relevant was because that manifestation helped grow the church and empower the Saints once you and I make it to heaven I won't need tongues I won't need prophecy but until he does we still need it if the early apostles needed it so do we and to sit back and say it ain't real somebody has been foolishly misled say amen somebody to that tonight lift your hand and say help us all God you see all the things that are associated with the Pentecostal experience and all things that correlate to the Pentecostal experience that are make it a, a, a different class a different species of Christian it doesn't mean that we're better than anybody. Someone say amen. Because what I believe is that a, a Pentecostal distinctive is just symbolic of the fact that we are a type of Christian or a Christian that believes in the full word of God. We don't retract from the Spirit. We still believe in the manifestations of the power and gifts of the Spirit. But here's the things that correlate to the Pentecostal experience. Look back at that upper room experience where the gifts of the Spirit were poured out. And think back. They were in one mind, in one accord, and you said it earlier, unity. One of the distinctives of the Pentecostal church should be unity. But when we become divided, we, are, we, we can't get along with one another. I didn't get to sing a special tonight and he did. That is not Pentecostal. Because the people in that upper room were in one mind and one accord. Huh? Unity is the key to the fluid motion of the church. Whenever the church becomes unified in its mission, unified in its desire, you give me a house full of hungry people and you'll see a church having revival. Unified in effort, unified in mission. They all want the same thing. But if you get Sally comes in and she don't care if we have church, she just showed up because she's got a position and she don't want to get fired. And then you got Josie Sue who came along with mama, didn't want to be there anyway. And you got all that division and people have not the same mind. That's why Paul said, I would that you all speak the same thing, mind the same thing, have the same common goal and interest. That means as a child of God, your efforts and your desires are unified. Say amen, somebody. That's right. It also means if you look at the scripture here this morning or this evening, that it shows us that they were evangelistic people. They were not people that took it to church, kept it in church, held it in church, and kept it all to themselves in church. 
they were evangelists. What does that mean? That their ministry was bigger on the outside of the church than it was on the inside of the church. To say I am Pentecostal means more than running aisles. To say I am Pentecostal means more than what you wear. To say I'm Pentecostal means so much more than how you walk and talk and your swag. Amen. What it means, you identify with what those people identified with. I'd like to say tonight that we can look around and say the church is doing its job, but in many cases it's not. What do you mean? Prove me wrong. I'm just going to guesstimate it here. You've heard me maybe say this before. But in my guesstimation, I'd say at least 85% of what these people did went on outside the church, walls, the building. And the rest went on inside. But today, I say about 98% of what we do goes on in the church, and the rest goes on outside, if at all. Somebody said, God help us to be evangelists. They went out, and they won people to Christ. They were not sheep that kept the message to themselves. They were not sheep that were ashamed of what they believed. They were proud of the fact that Christ had saved them, not in an ungodly, prideful way, but they were proud to be saved. They were proud to be Christians. They were not ashamed of it, and they were not afraid to tell somebody, I'm saved. I'm a child of God. They were not afraid to witness to the people they work with. Afraid that they may lose their job. They went. How do you know? Well, first of all, let me ask you. How does 120 people stay in an upper room for 10 days? Does nobody got a job? Does nobody have kids to take care of? Does nobody got responsibilities? Come on and tell me that was some sacrifice. Somebody had to make some sacrifices. And that's a part of the problem with the church today. We don't want to sacrifice for nothing. A Pentecostal distinctive is sacrifice. That means that whenever it's not easy, let me tell you the greatest breakthroughs I've ever got were most of the time when it was not easy. Sometimes whenever it's the hardest to get to church is when I say we must be going to have some church tonight. Huh? We must be going to have a powerful message tonight. God must be going to do something. Somebody might get a demon cast out of them tonight. And I just want you to know, I believe it's still possible to say amen. But not just that, but there are other distinctives in the church today that are aligned with the New Testament. Whether you see the miraculous and you see the miracles and the gifts, I still believe that it takes place like that. We can add all kinds of additives to that and call it Pentecostal and say, well, you're not Pentecostal unless you wave a flag. That ain't so. You can say it's Pente- you ain't Pentecostal unless you're rolling the floor. But I don't believe that's so. But if you are Pentecostal, you might just roll in the floor. I don't know. But I will tell you this much. If you line up with the fact that you must be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and a believer in the miraculous today, it matters. It matters. And to just simply say, well, I I gave my life to God, you know, and I, I put my name on the church roll and I don't care where I go to church and it doesn't matter where I sit on the pew and it doesn't matter what pastor I support. doesn't matter what church I pay my tithes in. I'm telling you, it does. You ever heard that old saying that the saints said years ago or the old folks used to say everything that glitters? It ain't gold. 